unfortunately it never really caught on and those that are told about this amazing new sound were never quite as enthusiastic about it as I. Perhaps the world was not quite ready for such high art but still I did not want to let my vision die. People had to hear this new sound and so I decided to host and completely self-fund a musical festival which would encompass aspects of this new art. The first of these festivals I held in my living room. This festival became Chinchilla. Amazingly people turned up and even other bands played. Maybe they were just here to see the spectacle of me. My set at the time consisted of making music with computers, which was at the time a new art and something I can say I was a pioneer of. That is to say, I hit an array of computers and peripherals such as printers and scanners with sticks making a loud, cacophonous noise. Which I think was quite a statement about our reliance of an enslavement by technology. I think this set lasted about four hours. I was eventually carried away, sobbing. Of course, people enjoyed the other bands. They were mere impersonators of my art. Not even worthy of my stage concentrating on such trivialities as rhythm, playing actual instruments and songs, a concept I thought thoroughly outdated and silly. I let them play anyway though, as they seemed to enjoy themselves. And perhaps, most likely due to my brilliance as a musician, possibly something to do with the bands as well, there was enough demand for the festival to return for another year, and then another, and then another, and it grew and grew. It became annual. More and more people came to see me and possibly the other bands. Cock. Morning guys. Uh, as you all know, last week we were uh, discussing the communications in the new media age and I asked you all to, uh, to read pages 177 of The Contradictions of Communications Convergence. Now, what do you all think of Professor Soiré's views on representation? Anyone? Did you all read it? Do you not know about representation of of um, gender in film? Oh dear. Well, in my opinion, uh, I think Professor Soiré's um, views on represent rep representation are uh, are biased and um, out, of, out of touch with today's societies. Now would anyone agree with me on that? Would you agree? You didn't read it, did you? You've had a week. <sighs> um, today's lesson was going to be about representation uh, and Professor Soiré's views, but if none of you have read it, then we can't really do anything. So, any ideas? It's not your job, is it? Before I go, um, can anyone tell me who did this drawing? Because I, for one, haven't got cocks for hands. And I think it's very immature. Because that's cleared up now, since the cream. Now, all I want to know is is who did it. I don't want to prosecute. I'm not going to throw you in the cell. I just want to know who did it. Because I think it's downright rude. I've never seen a penis that big. If you let me know who it is, who's done it, I'll... You're not going to tell me anyway, are you? Oh, okay. And by the way, it's not green anymore. You writing that down?
there was a lady uh, who, uh, a rather interesting person, she had invited me to do uh, children's plays and I'd done the costumes for these children's plays, and, which was really a big task because they were done at a, I think it was a Quaker house in Baker Street. There was a, a little orchestra, a children's orchestra, which I think remained fairly constant. But there was also a sort of fairy tale play, like something like the Snow Queen we did one year. You see, a composer whose sons became very famous, and at the moment, the awful thing is I simply can't think of his name, but a, a chap who's brilliant, I mean, brilliant, you'd know him at once because, I mean, he's, he, he himself has done a whole lot of musicals and things and was right up in that world uh, later uh, in his life later on. But his father, whose name was Lloyd Webber, uh, he wrote the music for this, the orchestral music for this play and also uh, composed sort of lyrics and things for the children to sing.